Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a very fascinating game played by Aron Reshko against Alek Kaminski. This game was played in 1972 at Leningrad Championship. Now let's see what happened on the board. Reshko started the game with c4 English opening and knight f6 by Kaminski, knight c3 e5, Knight f3, knight c6, we have the four knights variation and g3, white is choosing the fianchetto line, d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop g2, knight b6, white castles king side, bishop e7, usually in this position white is either playing d3, is going for reversed Sicilian dragon or is playing a3, but in this game we have a4, a5 by Kaminski, b3, black castles king side, Bishop b2, bishop e6, and as there is a hole on b5, the knight jumps on b5. Bishop f6, rook c1, queen c8, and d4. With this move, white wants to free his position and try to gain spatial advantage. Rook d8, now comes e4, he takes d4 and e5. White is playing very aggressively, is pushing forward the e pawn using the vulnerability of this c file. Bishop e7. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, c6, queen e2, white is exploiting the pin, is still keeping the knight on b5, and by unpinning the bishop is threatening, bishop takes b6, knight d5, bishop b2, knight c7, knight d4, bishop d5, and f4, white is starting an advancement on the king's side, we see the exchange of light squared bishops on g2 square, and bishop b4, f5, white proceeds with his attack, c5, right now the knight on d4 is hanging, but Aron Reshko went for e6 and he sacrificed the knight, look at this, c takes d4 is on the board, but let's see where is white's compensation, and now comes queen e5 with rook takes c7 threat, and also at some point white will try to exploit the weakness of this diagonal, Bishop c3, black blocked the rook's path, which is the most accurate defensive move. Bishop takes c3 and f6, black is first kicking away the queen from this active square and then we see d takes c3. Rook takes c3, rook d6 and rook d1. Well, instead of rook d1, e7 could have been better, although after rook c6, rook d3, knight e8, rook d8, rook c2, Rook takes e8 check, queen takes e8, queen takes c2, queen takes e7, the players have equal chances. Probably this should end up in a draw, but in the game after rook d6 we see rook d1, which still allows black to maintain a slight advantage. Rook c6, rook d3, knight e8, queen h5, this time white queen wants to penetrate from h5 square and rook c7. After this move, white is managing to equalize the game. So far so good, black was defending successfully, but in here it was important to announce a check from c2. If rook d2, then after the exchange of rooks on d2 and queen c6 check. If white plays king h3, then black can respond with g6. Of course here f takes g6 can be met with queen takes e6 check. That's why after g6 white should play queen h6 and after queen e4 still black is maintaining a slight advantage. But in the game after queen h5 we see rook c7 which allows this rook d7 move. Rook takes d7, e takes d7, queen d8, queen f3. Although, of course, white could also capture on d8, but in the game we see queen f3. The queen is coming after the pawn on b7. Knight c7, queen takes b7. King f8, rook c1. Queen takes d7 and rook takes c7. Finally, white managed to win back the sacrificed piece. And if we have a look at the position, white has an extra pawn. Queen d2 check, king f3, but white king is very vulnerable and black queen is starting to chase white king. Queen e4, queen d6 check, king g4, rook e8. Although black could capture on c7, this could have been a better alternative, but in the game we see rook e8. The problem with this rook e8 move is that now white can play queen b7 and black is in trouble. 
Of course, rook e7 can be met with several exchanges and this pawn endgame is going to be winning for white. But in the game after rook e8 we see queen c4. White is threatening checkmate in one but rook e4 was played and after queen takes e4 black won back the rook. Queen takes c7. We are in a queen endgame where white has an extra pawn and will try to realize his advantage. b4. A takes before queen takes before check, king g8, a5, h6, a strange move which is weakening the light squares too much. In return, white is pushing forward the a pawn, a6, king h7, queen d4, and queen a5. A very passive move, it was better to announce a check by sacrificing the pawn, after which if king takes h5 then black queen can start chasing white king with chances of giving a perpetual check or after h5 check actually king h3 is better for white but even in this case black can play queen c1 and then queen c8 if a7 then g5 still black is holding and has great chances of drawing the game but in the game after queen d4 we see queen a5 now comes a7 queen a6 king h4 queen a2 h3, queen a5, meanwhile black queen is covering both the a8 square and at the same time is trying to harass white king, queen d7, queen b4 check, king h5, queen a3, king g4, queen e3, a very cunning move, now you can't promote the pawn to a queen because after h5 check king takes h5, black can announce a checkmate, that's why after queen e3 we see h4, queen e4 check, king h5, queen f3 check and g4, white pawns manage to cover their king, white king is in a comparative safety and now all white needs is to go for a promotion, queen e4, queen f7, queen c6, queen e7, white queen should always cover these essential squares, otherwise if black queen can announce a check then that's actually going to end up with a checkmate. Queen d5, which is a mistake. Well, queen a4 could have been better, after which black can still fight for the draw. But in the game, we see queen d5. Now comes queen e8. And after queen b7, we have reached the critical position. And now you can pause the video and try to find white's next move. Ready? Looks like that everything is ready for a pawn promotion, but now white has to be very careful, because if you promote your pawn to a queen or even to a rook, then black has this powerful defensive resource, and if you accept the sacrifice, which is actually forced, then we have a stalemate on the board. That's why after queen b7, instead of promoting the pawn to a queen or to a rook, Aaron Reshko went for an under promotion and he promoted his pawn to a bishop. Look at this craziness guys. Now a question may arise, why not promoting the pawn to a knight? Because this queen should always cover the f7 square and can't come and help to activate the knight and actually still this is going too hard for white to do anything, black can definitely defend successfully and start giving perpetual check and the game will end up in a draw, that's why after queen b7 we have an under promotion to a bishop, queen b3 and as the light squared are weakened now the queen together with the bishop will start exploiting those weaknesses and queen e8 white is forcing the exchange of queens after which the rest is easy white is winning h5 was played a desperate attempt white king is munching that pawn and then bishop e8 another waiting move and king g6 after which finally oleg kaminski resigned let's have a look at one of the possible lines how white White can win the game. This h pawn is coming, and then bishop f7 check. If king f8, then white can simply capture on f6. If h5, then this g pawn is marching forward and finally is announcing a checkmate. An interesting game, I think. Of course, during the game there were some inaccuracies by both sides, but all in all, the game was fascinating, and of course, the most beautiful part of the game was the under promotion where on move 61 white promoted his pawn to a bishop. This is a study like move which can be rarely seen in chess games. Thanks for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this game. For more games consider subscribing to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Good luck.